Please like if you find this video helpful. Profitability Ratios With profit-seeking organizations, the primary objectives are maximization of shareholders' wealth. Financial performance can be measured using ratios. Profit is necessary for the survival and growth of profit-seeking organizations. Profitability ratios measures an organization's ability to deliver profits. Profits are used by an organization for investment, growth, and to provide shareholders with returns. Gross profit margin is gross profit divided by sales. Gross profit is sales less cost of sales. Gross profit margin is used to show for every dollar of sales made by an organization how much is going into gross profit. For example, gross profit is $5,000 and sales are $10,000. That means for every dollar of sales made, 50 cents is gross profit. Gross profit margin is useful for comparing year-on-year -year results, for comparisons with competitors of different sizes, and for comparisons against industry standards. In simple terms, the higher the gross profit margin, the better, with poor performance often being explained by sales prices being too low or costs being too high. Gross profit margin allows comparisons between organizations of different sizes. But a point to consider here is that with comparisons, remember a larger organization can get volume discounts, which may explain a lower gross profit margin for smaller organizations. Gross profit margin is affected by only a small number of variables, such as selling price, sales mix, purchase costs, and production costs. Net profit margin, also known as operating profit margin, is net profit divided by sales. Net profit is sales less cost of sales and all other expenses. Net profit margin is used to show for every dollar of sales made by an organization how much is going into net profit. Net profit margin, like gross profit margin, is useful for comparing year-on-year -year results, for comparisons with competitors of different sizes, and to industry standards. In simplest terms, the higher a company's net profit margin, the better. The questions to ask here are, are the changes in net profit margin in line with the changes in gross profit margin? Are the changes in net profit margin in line with the changes in sales revenue? Operating profit margin. Operating profit margin is profit before interest and tax divided by revenue. Operating profit margin is used to show for every dollar of sales made by an organization how much is going into operating profit. How does operating profit margin differ from gross profit margin? Well, operating profit margin gives a wider look by taking into account organizations' other day-to-day -day business costs, such as administration costs, research and development costs, training costs, and so forth. Gross profit margin only includes cost of sales. A point to consider when comparing operating profit margin to gross profit margin is, if an organization notices a large reduction between gross profit margin and operating profit margin figures, this would indicate that the organization is more efficient in creating and selling its products than it is at managing its day-to-day -day costs. How does operating profit margin differ from net profit margin?
will both consider the organization's other day-to-day -day costs. But operating profit margin does not include interest or tax costs. Meaning operating profit margin is better for comparing organizational performance in relation to other organizations. Other organizations may have different capital structures. With operational profit margin, interest costs are not included. Other organizations may be in different tax jurisdictions. With operational profit margin, tax costs are not included, making comparisons on results more meaningful. The expenses or operating ratio is expenses divided by net sales. The expense ratio is a measure of what it costs organizations to operate expressed as a percentage of net sales. Used mostly by industries that require a large percentage of net sales to maintain operations. It shows the efficiency of an organization's cost control. The smaller the ratio, the greater the organization's ability to generate profit if revenues decrease. It is useful to remember that if this ratio is rising, the company has not kept on top of its cost control. The expense ratio can be compared to competitors or benchmark organizations. Asset turnover is sales divided by capital employed. Capital employed represents the capital investment necessary for a business to function. Capital employed is calculated as fixed assets plus current assets minus current liabilities. The asset turnover ratio represents the dollar in sales for every dollar tied up in assets. It measures how efficient an organization is at using its assets to generate sales. The higher the ratio, the more efficient the organization. But problems such as overtrading need to be considered here. Asset turnover is best for comparing industries in the same sector. An increase in asset turnover could be achieved by either increasing sales, for example, through the launch of new products or through the use of a successful advertising campaign, or through the reduction in capital employed. This could be through the repayment of long-term debt. Return on capital employed, also known as return on investment, is profit from operations divided by capital employed. Return on capital employed measures the return that is being earned on the capital employed by an organization. It represents the dollar in profit for every dollar tied up in assets. Return on capital employed tells you if you invest in a business what sort of money you would get back. Capital employed equals total assets less current liabilities. Or total equity plus long-term debt, which is share capital plus reserves plus long-term loans. When deciding what figure to use, consider what is important to compare. Operating profit before interest represents the profit available to pay interest to debt investors and dividends to shareholders. This should therefore be compared with long-term debt and equity invested in the business. Profit after interest and tax represents profit available to pay dividends to shareholders. This should be used to calculate return on ordinary shareholder funds. Investors use return on capital employed to compare alternative investments of similar risk. Generally, the higher the return on capital employed figures, the better it is for investors. To increase return on capital employed figures, an organization can either increase profits by charging a higher price or reducing costs, or an organization could reduce its capital employed for example, by repaying debts.
return on capital employed is easy to calculate. The figures used in this ratio are readily available. Return on capital employed, although used by many external analysts and investors, has been shown to have a poor correlation with shareholders' value. Care must be taken to compare like with like, and results can be distorted by accounting policies or can be improved by cutting back on investments which can lead to short-termism. Return on capital employed equals net profit margin multiplied by asset turnover. This relationship can be used in calculations. For example, if you are told that the business has a net profit margin of 5% and an asset turnover of 2, then the return on capital employed would be 10%. This means any change in the return on capital employed figure can be explained by a change in net profit, a change in asset turnover or a change in both. Return on capital employed should be compared with an organization's previous year's results, any return on capital employed figure targets set, the cost of borrowing or other companies in the same industries return on capital employed results. Earnings before interest taxes, depreciation and amortization is an indicator of a company's financial performance. Calculated as revenue less expenses, excluding taxes, interest, depreciation and amortization. It is essentially net income with interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization added back to it. It is used to analyze and compare profitability between companies and industries because it eliminates the effects of financing and accounting decisions. The idea behind earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization is that taxes and interests are externally influenced and therefore not relevant in the underlying performance of the organization. Depreciation and amortization represents a write-off of expenditure over a number of years and therefore are not relevant to the underlying performance of the organization.